our money huddle. Joining me is Seth Denson. He's a Newsmax contributor and a business and market analyst. Also here is America's accountant, Dan Geltrude. He's a CPA and founder of Geltrude and Company. I need a good CPA, Dan. Maybe I'll give you a call. <laughs> Let's start. Let's start. I'll go for you, John. We all do. <laughs> yeah, right. Nowadays, nowadays we certainly <laughs> do, right? Dan, Dan, let's start with you. So, I mean, one question that kind of came to my mind when all this is came out yesterday with the announcement, and even before that, is what what happens with the loan companies that that aren't getting their money back, and will there be an impact ultimately on us taxpayers? You know, with that, what do you think? Well, the loans we're talking about here are all federal loans. So when those loans are forgiven, it's the federal government that's taking the loss. And what's interesting here is when you are discharged from debt, that is considered income. In this particular case, it won't be. So that 10000 or up to $20,000 that these um, students are going to be forgiven, that's tax exempt. So it's a great deal for them. It's a great deal for the universities. Bad deal for everyone else. Yeah, and Seth, besides causing taxpayers to, uh, to front more cash for his plans, this really won't change anything because the federal loan program isn't, you know, essentially isn't being touched, right? It's not, it's, we're in full swing, man. We're running up the tab. The till is open. Uh, colleges are still continuing to increase their tuition rates. Over the last 20 years, college tuition has gone up 200%. They're the big winner in all of this. Yeah. They get to continue to raise their rates. I've heard Dan say before, and he's absolutely right, this is the largest employment agency out there that is the most expensive is today's universities. And that's continuing to go up. This privatized group that are that are funding these things, these are federally backed loans. They're going to be left whole. We're all going to be paying for it. And I, want, I think this is really an important thing to say, though. This is a deflection move in some ways. The Inflation Reduction Act, which was $400 billion, was signed into law, what, last week? This week, yeah. we're doing anywhere from three to $900 billion. We have spent a trillion dollars of new money in about seven days. What in the world are we doing in this inflationary period? This is insanity. Yeah, and, and you know, well, speaking of which, also, um, student loan repayments, by the way, restart next year after December 31st, conveniently after the, the midterms, right? So I, I think there's a little bit of tinge of possibly politics involved with this. Shocking. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, imagine that. Let's, let's, let's shift gears a little bit. I want to talk about um, the housing market and rental prices, some of the things, you know, when, when President Biden is talking about uh, help folks afford the rent. Yeah. Uh, good luck. You know, I mean, people need all the help they can get these days, right? U.S. rent prices have once again hit a new record, uh, record high for the 17th month in a row at almost $1,900 on average, which is up over 12% from a year ago. I can tell you this, in Miami, where I live, over the last few years, I mean, it's insane. They've skyrocketed the, the rental prices there. So how are Americans expected to afford these prices, student loan repayments and forgiveness and debt forgiveness or not, you know, how is that, how is it possible that people are going to be able to keep up with these prices? Dan, I want to start with you and then I'll go to, go to Seth on that. Well, they simply can't, right? And that's, that's the problem with inflation. And that's why inflation is so insidious and why we have to really deal with this problem in a serious way. And I think the reason we haven't been able to get inflation under control is what we're seeing right now with this forgiveness of debt, uh, student debt. We're not really addressing the problem. Inflation right now is being caused by not enough supply. Instead, we're focusing in on how to kill demand. That's not the way to approach this. So as prices continue to go up and go up and go up, it's all based upon the scarcity of supplies. So until we address that bad policy in place, we're going to continue to see Americans struggling very seriously. Yeah, hey, Seth, I want to ask you something about the housing market. Um, my wife and I are looking to buy a new home. Uh, I, I've read that the housing market is in a recession and that maybe and I've been told by various people hey no hold off don't buy right now that prices may be inflated is the housing market in a recession is now not a good time to buy or is it or or is it I don't know what you know do you it's, it's a broader question John and a lot of it depends on where in the country you are 
Um, what we tell people all the time is what you want to make sure you're not doing is overbuying house. If you're looking at your interest rate right now, and to Dan's point, that inflation is what's causing interest rates to go up because the Fed's trying to get that into, under control. So you've got this compounding issue in the housing market. The problem you've got, or the, I would say the one thing you want to focus on is you can refinance interest rates. You can't refinance principal. Principal, whatever you pay for that house is what you bought that house at. Now, in certain pockets, maybe where you are in Miami, where I am in Texas, not where Dan is up in New Jersey, uh, I think in our neck of the woods, prices are going to stabilize. They may, they may not go up as fast, but I think they'll still continue continue to go up, maybe not even drop. If you're in a cash position, that's great. If you're up where Dan is, uh, I think they're going to drop. So you might have a buying opportunity. But where we are, I think you might want to, if you find the right deal, get it, but plan to refinance as soon as interest rates do drop. Yeah. Dan, I don't know where you are, but I read recently that Jersey City has now become the most expensive city in America. I used to live in Jersey City and boy, I wish I would have bought <laughs> when I lived there back way back 15 years ago, whenever it was. Uh, Seth Danson and, uh, and Dan Geltrude, I appreciate you guys coming on for Money Huddle. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks, guys.